there's some damage control going on a couple of fronts right now yeah. around Major League Baseball with A-Rod, uh, with justifiably Bud Selig in baseball and how they've handled or not handled this properly. So there's there's a lot of ways we can go down here. The other issue is when you look at, at how these, these quote-unquote PED situations have arisen in baseball, yeah. very rarely have these top dog stories been actual positive tests. Right. It's just been whistleblowers and guys rolling under oath and buying documents and the and then Miami New Times and it's it hasn't been right. drug testing at all right um so it leads to a couple of questions here to discuss is a guy who knows uh, a little bit about that Bob Weiner from uh, Robert Weiner Associates former White House drug policy spokesman I'm impressed right there <laughs> and he helped create the world and US anti-doping agencies Bob welcome to Tim and Sid we appreciate your time today how you doing I'm good, Tim and Sid, and thanks so much for having me. Uh, you guys have a lot of impact, so I hope our message gets out that these penalties are a joke that uh, baseball gave out when you figure that uh, these guys will be back uh, for the playoffs. 50 games is less than a third of a season, and as far as uh, Rodriguez is concerned, the uh, he can play it out, and then he's ready to retire anyway because he's appealing the suspension. So what are, ki what are kids supposed to think, guys? What are kids who these are supposed to be the models for when they see these busted druggies coming back for the playoffs and Rodriguez still playing? So baseball is not serious. How do you suggest they get serious? Well, they got to go to the route that the like you said, I helped form the world and anti uh, and U.S. anti doping agencies. And Frank Shorter, the U.S. anti doping agency's first chair, spoke at my White House farewell and said I created his job. These guys, and I talked to Hillary Clinton about it too, and she said, "What do you do about it?" And I told her that professional sports have to adopt the WADA U.S. ADA model. They have to get tested by the best, and they have to use the penalties that the Olympics and track and field, the gold standards, do, which is first offense is a two year ban. You know, if, if Barry Bonds or any of these guys would, would have been in, in the Olympics or track and field, they're done. They're done for two years. And their second offense, which this is for some of them, it's a lifetime ban. That's the seriousness that we need to show kids who, by the way, uh, a half a million kids use steroids. Uh, they started when McGuire uh, used androstenedione, and suddenly uh, steroid use by kids quintupled because of that. Uh, and, and, and between a half a million and a million, actually, kids use them. And then parents are coming into the Congress saying our kids are paranoid, they're schizophrenic, they're committing suicide, and, and, and they're becoming violent from, from what these drugs do to the kids. These are not harmless drugs that these kids are using, and that's the real mission here. I don't care so much about professional sports. I do care about cheating. That's not fair because, you know, you shouldn't be having... Half of baseball, by the way, cheat, which is what the Mitchell report said. It's not these 13, 14 guys. It's half of baseball, and they're only getting a few because the testing isn't serious. I'm glad you brought up kids, and it's something that we have talked about on this show before, that it's not about millionaire athletes. It's about the kids and the trickle-down effect. And, That's and right. Listen, it hit Canada way before it hit the United States because in 1988, Ben Johnson tested positive, and the whole world should have known. Lyle Alzado was on the front of Sports Illustrated in 1989, yet people buried their heads um, for a decade. The, the, the question that I have for you is the harsher penalties, and that's something that we brought up, and specifically track and field. Um, right. We all now know about... Jones is gone. You know, we, we take right. our people out. But, but, the whole, but hold on. Some really big names just took a hit in Tyson Gay and Asafa Powell. That's right. Two of the top four in the London games. So is that really a deterrent? Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, the United States uh, track and field and the Olympics take deep pride in really meaning it. That's the key. And the fact that they mean it and the value system, the culture, isn't to try to cover it up and hide it, which it always used to be and it still is in professional sports, right. is what motivates people. We want clean sport. The Olympics and sponsors are running away from people who aren't clean now. You know, it's not just baseball. I wrote a piece, in the, and so did Amy Shipley in the Washington Post. I wrote it in the Charlotte Observer, Tuesday, May 25, 2010. Tiger Woods' doctor, Anthony Galea, was arrested by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and faced charges including conspiracy to import unapproved drugs, selling actogen, smuggling banned drugs. And his assistant, this guy's assistant, was caught at the U.S.-Canada border carrying illegal substances. And you take a look at Tiger Woods' puffed-up face and people in Iowa surgeon 
has written how it has all the, the, the symptoms of uh, drug use, and now Tiger's coming back after he hid for a while after those two articles. So it's in every sport that you've got to do this kind of testing and be serious about it. But the testing isn't good enough because the professional athletes know how to use masking agents. And what Frank Shorter told me when we were uh, standing against the wall at the Sydney Olympics was, watch who comes late because they'll come where they don't use the drugs for three days and they, it dries out. Now there are drugs that the drugs dry, dry out in a, in a day. Yeah. So all you have to do is come late and avoid the, the uh, testing when you get there, and you can cheat at these major events. So we've got a lot of work to do, guys. Uh, Bob, I'll move on, I swear, but you did mention the uh, U.S. Track Association or whatnot. I mean, listen, we're Canadians. We or track and field. We remember yeah. Seoul. We remember Ben Johnson. That anniversary is coming up. That's what yeah. started all this off. Yeah, but, Car- yeah. but, but there, were, there were Americans in that race, too. I mean, this is, this is a problem. This has been yeah. a long-standing issue on both sides of the border. Do you not agree? Well, Michael Johnson, when I worked at the White House, the great uh, world champion who won the only 100-200 uh, double in, in the Olympic history, four, and they yeah. re- reinvented the schedule for him so he could do uh, the 200-400 uh, yeah. double. And uh, he, when I saw him at the Mobile Invitational and asked him if he would come to the White House and do drug spots for kids, he thought that was a great idea. And then, you know, you put stuff in your inbox and you forget about it. Two weeks later, he called and said, well, can I come and do it? He really wanted to come and show kids that they, there should be clean sport and clean, and, and clean competition. So I don't believe that it's everybody. I believe it's a small number of people because there's a motivation in track and field not to cheat, and it's really slimy. And, and you know, I'm a master's competitor, and I'm on the, on the board for, for the drug penalties for track and field uh, for, for masters track and field and, and we all want to have the value system of clean and there are a couple of people that won't show up at the championships now because there's testing we all want them there right um, how we know that money plays a significant factor in the motivations of the players how much does money play into the mo- motivations to not be more harsh with these guys from the leagues well, Ty, Rodriguez is going to lose thirty-four million of his hundred million salary. Poor boy. <laughs> uh, and and so uh, no, but I mean from the leagues. And these guys, they're the ones that are losing a, a third of the season. They get two thirds of their millions of dollars. Right. So they're not even hit. They're not even hurt. They're not hit. Uh, so that's why they need serious penalties if they want to really make the message. Here's the problem. The players union negotiates it out. Every little tweak has to be done through the players union and they don't tr- they try they have not reached the value system that the three of us Tim and Sid and and I have have reached and and most of the rest of the world who booed Rodriguez last night in his game um that uh, that there should be clean sport. Uh Bob, you mentioned uh the future president of the United States Hillary Clinton. And well, uh, well, that's possible. Well, yeah, well, hey, <laughs> listen. I, I, I actually brought up, you know, I, I she, I worked in the Clinton White House, so I've gone over periodically op eds with her, and I just got a letter from her congratulating me on continuing my op eds and my wife for her cancer research and so. And yes, she asked a few years ago what the answer is, and 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 she thought that was a rational answer was to use the WADA USADA standards testing and penalties. At what point, Bob? Though, do do not not as if they have other important things to deal with, which they do, right? But when, when does performance-enhancing use in the world of sports to earn a professional contract become a federal fraud crime? Well, when do we is. get to that point? Because n- now we're really not there. Steroids are federally against the law, and Congress has held hearings on this. And Congress is trying and trying to motivate uh, the professional sports leagues to adopt the uh, Olympic and, and track and field standards. Uh, it obviously isn't working because of the players' union. Now, I don't know why the players' union and the players themselves don't just come up and, and adopt the standards and, and develop the morals for wanting clean standards so that kids can look at the, the values of these guys and say, that's who we want to emulate. I don't know why they don't do that. I mean, if I were on the board of directors of, of the players' union, I'd, I'd be pushing for that. And instead, they still have the value system of let's cover it up, let's make it as difficult as possible, let's do the least we can to get away with it, let's pretend that this bust of 13, 14 people uh, doesn't, uh, is, is what baseball needs to do instead of what the Mitchell report, which baseball itself commissioned, that said that half of baseball players are dirty. Let's just pretend we're doing everything we can and keep knocking it out of the, out of the parks with, uh, with steroids. That's not the value system that people want anymore.
Former White House Drug Policy Spokesman Bob Wiener joining us here on Tim and Sid. I find it remarkably interesting that baseball is the primary focus of the national media in the United States. And I understand it in a way because, one, people are lazy, and two, because baseball thought they were immune from this for a long time when the rest of the world was saying, hey, wait a second, there's a problem in sports. Do you think that anyone will take on a sport based on uh, speed, size, and strength like NFL football? Well, they, they do. There's been press on NFL players, the couple that are busted. But it's the same thing. You know what all these sports teams do when, when uh, the testers are coming? They say, hey, guys, the testers are coming on Thursday. So they, then this is literally what's happened. They, then the guys dry out and they test uh, clean. So uh, that, that makes it difficult to, to get the real story. But there have been busts in football. I mentioned to you the, the little bit of press that Tiger Woods has, has gotten and, and, and others. Tennis, uh, uh, the, uh, Agassi uh, admitted in his book that he, that he used drugs. Nobody has picked up on that. Nobody has said, well, then you shouldn't earn your titles. We should withdraw them. I mean, there, there are laws and rules about cheating, and Agassi admitted in his book that he used the drugs and then tennis ignored it and didn't say, we're taking your title. I don't understand that. Bob, just you, you brought up Tiger Woods yeah, a few moments ago. Just I, speculation, I, right? I just want to, do you, th- do you think Tiger Woods is on performance enhancing drugs? I read you the facts about his doctor and his doctor's assistant carrying the drugs, and Woods was, on, was training with them for his quote-unquote injuries. I, I just gave you the facts, and that's right. the story that I wrote, and that's the story that Amy Shipley wrote in the Washington Post. I wrote it in the Charlotte Observer. Go to the Charlotte Observer, Tuesday, May 25th, 2010. All athletes should face the same drug, the same tough drug testing. That's the title of the story. Right. Just the facts, man. Right. Dr. Anthony Galea is a local doctor, so we know very go. well of Dr. Anthony Galea and what he has been through and what he believes. So it's, it's an interesting story, and it goes across... Um, it goes across sports, and, and I hope that this conversation will help people acknowledge that a little more than just focusing on a guy like A-Rod or these 13 Correct. guys. Yeah. By Th- the way, you have a real hero in Canada, Dick Pound, the yeah. founder of the World Anti-Doping Agency, and I worked for him. Uh, I was his uh, spokesman for uh, several Olympics, and, uh, and, and have, he and I and McCaffrey are all friends. General, Fourth Star General Barry McCaffrey, who was the White House drug czar, uh, and th- that's really the triumvirate that created uh, the value system. Dick Pound, Barry McCaffrey, and Frank Shorter created the, the value system that says we should be testing in sports and stopping the, the cheating. So and congratulations to you on everything Dick Pound has done. And he's been a regular on this station for a while. Good. Thanks a lot. Uh, we really appreciate the, the conversation and how frank it was. Thanks. Great. There is uh, Bob Weiner, who uh, at one point was the White House drug policy spokesman and obviously cares a great deal about doping in sports and uh, brought up some interesting points.